And then uh, before we talk about uh, more about the posters and that stuff, I just wanted to mention um, a, a really uh, impactful story that I heard um, that, uh, and we've already talked about wildfires, so you know, we, we've finished that, those modules up, but I wanted to uh, just reiterate, this plays into hurricanes, this plays into all disasters, um, but uh, this was a wildfire uh, symposium uh, that I was attending on Thursday, and it just speaks to a lot of the institutional challenges that we have. And so, um, so this particular session was on native burning, on, on indigenous fire. And a lot of times when we hear about uh, traditional uses of fire, like the examples I talk about are Yosemite, we talk about Northern California, these big forested areas, right? But we here in Southern California mostly have you know, coastal sage scrub, chaparral, we don't have those sort of big, thick, um, woody forests. Uh, we have oak woodlands, but, but I don't really have good examples from Southern California to talk about traditional burning. Um, uh, it in inevitably happened, it definitely happened, but um, so ubiquitous was the, the genocide and the nuking of those cultures that we don't have good, uh, in many cases, we don't have good examples. So I don't, I don't have good, I can't talk to my Shumash friends and say like, hey, how did you guys do that? They're like, they're not, they haven't done it in a long time, right? Um, but it's true that when the first Europeans came to our part of the world, they thought, like when they saw LA, the greater LA area, it was all smoke, right? It, they, they thought it was fog and it was actually smoke from the burning of of grasslands and stuff. So there clearly were these practices. Um, and so, so this panel was about Southern California uh, indigenous burning. And I was like, great, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna get some you know, great stuff um, and great examples and everything. And uh, suffice it to say that this tool is still being resurrected it's 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 still it's, it's not as robust as other parts of our state but um uh one of the speakers um it was the first time she told this story in public and it was very emotional it was very difficult for her to talk about but i'll, I'll just summarize it very briefly which is that um she talks about the criminalizing of traditional practices so not just like that we forgot how or not just that we we're not sure how to do it but actively making it illegal and so uh, uh, she as she's telling the story you know which, which is which you know intellectually I sort of kind of know about that but um, she basically talked about how um, you know so she talked about in generalities and she kept talking she got more and more specific more and more specific more and more specific and then she eventually talked about her dad, she said, for example, um, you criminalized my father. And uh, he, I forget the exact age, his 70s, something like that. Uh, um, and she said, he, and this is, in, this is a, a, a tribe in San Diego County. Uh, he's been, so they're, they're on their ancestral land, that you know, family has this property and has had it for, you know, ever. Um, and her father was born on that property and she said her father has been burning their land for the last 60 years. So, you know, the, in the traditional, traditional ways of, of applying fire and managing the land. And this last summer, somebody saw him starting a fire and called the cops and they arrested him. And because he had some, you know, previous issues with the law, uh, it was his third strike. So they were gonna put him away for 25 years. Um, and, uh, and it just got, the story just got crazier and crazier. So it turns out he's actually a smoke jumper. He was a professional firefighter for, you know, decades. So it wasn't like some rando just, you know, throwing a match somewhere and, and whatever. It was someone that knew how to, how to, you know, control fire, how to, how to be responsible, how to, how to make sure it wouldn't, you know, cause undue harm and that kind of stuff. Uh, and um, eventually, eventually to get to the end of the story, eventually they, there was a plea deal made, and so he, he's now on a one-year probation, but he had to go to wildfire training, and, and you know, control burn training. And when he went to control burn training, the, the dude that was doing the training was some 20-something, 
right? Some 20 something guy. And um, that had, you know, who knows, orders of magnitude less experience doing these things. And so you talk about how, how difficult that is, you know, on so many levels, but psychologically, uh, legally, uh, culturally, all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, the speaker went on to say that, you know, she doesn't need a permit for her songs. She doesn't need a permit for, um, you know, to gather traditional foods. Like none of these things that, that her, her people do require, you know, quote unquote government approval, except for fire. But fire does. And, uh, and that that's fucked up is the technical term for that. Including the fact that anybody in, in that part of San Diego County can get a slash, pile, a slash pile, so he cuts down some brush, slash pile burn permit online. Like instantly. Like, you, like hey, I just, I just did a bunch of clearing of my, of, uh, you know, made some wildfire breaks. I want to burn this, click, 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 hey, this is who I am, click, click, boom, and you can burn it with no training, with no experience, whatever. And so, so this, the, the, the fundamental injustice and, and just stupidity and grossness of all that. Um, and so to her credit, you know, that, that's a very tough thing to, to have to talk about that kind of stuff in a public forum. Um, and uh, to their credit, all the people there, Cal Fire, all these people are like, this is jacked up, and, and a bunch of uh, uh, electeds, you know, staff members from Congress people and stuff, like went up and started talking to her, like, hey, we should figure out some some statutory protections for these types of things so that we can avoid this in the future. But it just speaks to, um, as we've been talking about in this class, even though we focus on the the, the physics, we focus on how the water molecules cause the erosion, and everything. But, but these human dimensions are fundamentally tied to all these things as well. And even though we think we're making good progress, and we are getting better, we're definitely getting a lot better with a lot of these challenges, we still have a lot of this inherent baloney that gets in the way of, of just management and, and sustainable management of stuff. And so um, I know we already talked about wildfires, but it was, so, it was such an important story. I wanted to share that uh, with you guys. Um, and uh, long story short, you're starting to, you know, watch the videos or, or, or read the stuff about Hurricane Katrina. Very similar things happened in Katrina, right? Very similar things where, where people that did traditional stuff were, were suddenly criminalized and, and people just trying to survive were, were, you know, shot and all kinds of horrible crap. Uh, so, so these things are fundamental with, when we talk about disasters, these things should not be separated. Um, and these things need to be addressed just like we need to address the, the, the structural soundness of our buildings. We also need to address the, the social structures that, that make us more or less sustainable, more or less rigorous. Okay. Um, okay. So, having said that, uh, let me talk about, uh, let's talk a little bit about the logistics of this, of this stuff. Um, firstly, do you guys have any questions about this case study? I, I, I think everybody's giving me their, their subject. Okay, so it's the same, the, the same broad things, just like we did before, right? So um, you want, we want to quantify stuff. Don't say, a lot of people did this, or some people did this. It's like, like you know, 452 people passed away, or, or you know, X you know, extent of houses were damaged or, you know, X dollars of, of impact and cite the source and cite the source. Um, uh, here though, you can do, but we do, but the key thing with a poster though, as opposed to the, uh, a text-based report is that we have limited space and that's by design. So you can't say everything you want to under the sun. You can, that can be your first draft. You can put just a ton of stuff, but you have to be selective, right? You have to be, there's only so much, so much real estate we have to work with here. So we, so first thing to say is it's okay to have sentence fragments here. You don't have to write a full paragraph. You don't have to write a full sentence even. So it's okay. But the principles of citing your sources, quantifying the, the, the statement, uh, still totally apply, right? Um, 
and and also, you know, so there's a many of us. A, a map is really important to, for us to understand that the spatial extent or something of that nature. You know, boom, make sure we have a good a good quality map in there. Um, but let me explain just the logistics of this, since maybe this might be the first time you guys have seen this. So this is uh, a single PowerPoint slide, okay? Uh, and so this particular slide, if I, um, right? So um, I have the rough, you know, uh, uh, headings here, to topic stuff here. Sorry, hold on. <coughs> Thank you. I have the I have the rough, uh, you know, headings here, so you guys can use those. And I have text in here, right? I, I have I have stupid, you know, just filler text, right? So um, do not make the font any smaller than this. Okay. So the other thing about posters, one, they are, um, uh, we have limited real estate, okay, one. But two, they're fundamentally a visual medium, right? So, uh, so uh, when we look at this, we don't want it to be hard to read. The classic example of a poster is a poster would be on the wall, say the screen right here, and then a person would be about, uh, you know, six, eight feet away and they should be able to easily read it. The test for that, the test for your poster, the quick and dirty one, if this is my, if this is my poster, I would come up here and I would say uh, 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 display, t turn my uh, or slideshow, do my slideshow here. And then I have to do this so you can see it. Um, uh, and then I'm going to take, so on my screen, my, either my, my desktop or my laptop, I'm going to take my arm, I'm going to touch the tip of my fingers to that screen, and I should be able to read everything at least fairly easily, right? If not, I should probably make the fonts a little bit bigger. I know that's not perfect, there's, there's some things, but, but, but generally speaking, that, that's a good quick and dirty thing. Is it, is, is my, are my fonts big, are, are my letters large enough for people to easily read, okay? Um, and so, so suffice it to say, use this font. Don't go smaller. You can go bigger, but but um, I wouldn't go a huge lot bigger because you have a lot of stuff to get to. Um, but basically, use this. Um, you know, you're going to adjust the the size of these boxes. You know, how many bullets and that kind of stuff. But but as far as the general boxes, I would just you know use these as your starter. Um, okay. The other thing that uh, I get a lot is. Um, so this is a PowerPoint, a PPTX, oh, or, sorry, let me finish also one last thing about that. So if I come up here and I do uh, page setup, you'll find that this is one slide, okay? You all might be used to making some slides, a slideshow for an in-class presentation or whatever, which is totally cool. This is sized differently, okay? So the, 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 the dimensions of this slide are not for on-screen show, these are 48 inches by, th this slide is a 46 inch by 36 inch slide. So that's a four by three foot poster. Now we're not gonna print these up, but this is basically done in such a way that we could print them up and they would be, they would be just like any old regular poster that we would do in, in like a, a conference or a meeting or whatever. Um, and so, so that's important for you guys to make sure you're understanding this, right? So that uh, when, I, when I click on this, which you might think, oh, that's like 12 point font or something like that. When I click on this right here, it says 32 points, right? Because it's, it's four feet by three feet, right? So, um, so yeah, so this is all size for you. You don't, need to, you don't need to mess with any of the dimensions, but I just wanna make sure you guys, you guys get that. Um, uh, now, uh, this is PowerPoint. You guys also have access to Google Slides. Um, it used to be the case that if we wanted to do stuff in Google Slides, you had to convert this thing in front of us into a Google Slide, uh, uh, into the Google Slide format. Um, do not do that. I'll just say it again, do not do that. You can upload this Power PPTX file to your Google Drive and you all can share and edit it, but as a PPTX file, right? Just like you can do the same to, for, to Word files and stuff now. That's how, if, that's how as, as a group, that's how I'd recommend working on it. 
don't convert it to Google Slides. Google Slides will almost always screws up these things. And I've just done it for too many years, had too many students get stuck and then they're all upset and they're angry. Just leave it in, PowerPoint is a much more versatile, much more powerful program and format. Google Slides copied PowerPoint. And so just about everything that Google Slides does, they had to license from Microsoft. And so as a consequence, they didn't license everything. So, so PowerPoint is still a much more diverse, much more, um, many more ways to, to get to a particular solution than you can in Google Slides. And so, so uh, again, the Google, the Google Drive is a fantastic tool for collaborating and, and having us all be able to, to do the, the edits or whatever. The other one I would just say is that um, sometimes you guys don't have the Microsoft Office suite on your computer and you use the sort of online version through um, like OneDrive or whatever, uh, that usually seems to cause some issues too. Theoretically, it shouldn't. But again, that Microsoft online version doesn't have the same functionality as the, as the more regular computer-based application. And so, um, so yeah, th th those are just my only cautions. So, so keep it in the native PowerPoint format. Uh, and and you'll be you'll be good to go.